being a student of social sciences, uh, dignity as a concept has been quite prominent in the discourses on human rights and justice. Um, and also it is being increasingly um, featured in the quest for human development. And as the Kantian idea of human beings having a very intrinsic value, which is dignity, uh, which makes us valuable above all price. And over the years, this philosophical flame has been extended and critiqued. And uh, as a student, I've known that Martha Sen and Martha Nussbaum have contributed greatly to link ideas of you know, human rights and justice with a very important concept of dignity. But today, uh, we're not going to focus on these abstract, you know, theoretical discussion. We'll, uh, I, I think all of us are more interested to know what exactly does it mean for a person who is migrated to live a dignified life, especially for a person coming from a country which has very um, high unemployment and underemployment rate, uh, who is forced, subtly, to you know, seek job opportunities in foreign land. What does it mean to, in a very dignified manner, leave your country to enter another foreign land uh, and then to come back with your hard-earned money? So I think um, we're going to discuss these very practical implications of these two major concepts. And with us, I'm very honored to introduce in our panel, we have the UNHCR Nepal's Protection Officer, Mr. Christopher Tagnal. I would like to welcome him. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, we have uh, the Chief of Mission of IOM Nepal, Mr. Paul Norton. Welcome. We have a very renowned leading policy advocate and activist on violence against women and issues of migration. Dr. Renu Adhikari, welcome. She's also uh, she's also recently been nominated. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to congratulate you for that. And we have uh, Dr. Gopal Krishna Sivakati. He's the immediate past chair of Asia Pacific Refugee Rights Network, and of course, both of them are senior human rights activists and civil society leaders of Nepal. I welcome all four of you. You session mozi pray English may moderate garni chhu. Taro amra char jana bhakta aru madhe dui jana bhakta ji varle. Ali Nepali ma bolji nu bhayo bani. Amra audience ma jo Nepali bahasa bolun huncha bujnu huncha wahan aru bolagi jai. Thank you. No no. No no. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I didn't know this was part of the panel discussion. <laughs> so, try on resume on this. I said, 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 I this uh, was your floor open, Garne Suma, the bad like a Jigyasa, Prashna Savani. If you have any questions after a round of this panel discussion, uh, you may ask your questions uh, and the panelists uh, will answer them. So, first of all, I think I would like to begin with uh, Mr. Christopher. <laughs> so, with Mr. Christopher. Um, I don't know much about, um, since you, you work in work uh, with, on refugees, and uh, largely there's uh, a tendency to understand uh, refugees and migrants uh, on similar light, on the same light. Uh, how important is it to distinguish between that? And if you could also tell us a little bit about the uh, international implications or the global impact of uh, um, the global compact on refugees, which was recently uh, uh, endorsed by the U uh, United Nations General Assembly. What are the implications? If you could enlighten us on that. 
Um, thank you very, very much for, uh, for taking the time to come and see us. Um, with regard to the first question, the um, I think it's extremely important to really um, appreciate the, the uh, differences and then the crossovers between migrants and refugees. Um, not all migrants are refugees, but some refugees are migrants. So it sounds a bit of a confused statement, but that's because it's quite a complex issue. Um, to give you an example, say, for instance, we can call someone John. They grow up in a certain country, they go to school in a certain country, and they live a normal life. They have certain skills and uh, qualifications. Um, and then at some point in their lives, they face a significant problem. And feeling unsafe and not confident that they can rely on the protection of the country that they come from, they need to flee. Now then, that, that um, in, in, in individual, John, he becomes a refugee. At the same time, he's still John. And, and John has dreams. Uh, John has um, work that he, he would like to do. So in some circumstances, that would also mean that John would be looking to find work in a different country. And that's where he, he could become a migrant as well. So the whole concept of refugee and migrant is um, quite, quite a complex issue. And there's no black or white, essentially. So I hope that's a relatively um, decent stab at an answer for the first question. Um, and for today, so what I'd actually like to do, Paul, is really start off in terms of the global compact of mi migration. If you could, yeah, speak to that, and then maybe I can fit in a bit later in terms of the, G the GCR. Yeah, we can do that. So. Uh if Mr. Paul could uh, tell us about the implications, what does it mean for Nepal to have uh, the Global Compact on Migration endorsed? Uh, thank you. Hello. Hello. Um, uh, first of all, thank you to the uh, uh, international uh, film festival, festival, the Nepal Human Rights International Film Festival. I think this is a wonderful opportunity to, to as Chris alluded to, discuss a fairly complex uh, but important and impactful issue in all of our lives. And the focus is of the festival, of course, is on uh, uh, migration with dignity. And so I just uh, looked up dignity because I know what it means. And I thought, well, let me remind myself. And so I'm going to read the definition. Uh, dignity is the right of a person to be valued and respected for their own sake and to be treated ethically. It is of significance in morality, ethics, law, and politics. Uh, and it is an extension of the inherent inalienable rights of all human beings. I think that's actually quite a lovely uh, intention. Um, because we, we do find that that is not uh, applied uniformly to all migrants in all situations. Uh, and so it's a very important concept for us to discuss uh, at the conference today and for it to be the theme of the 90 films that are being shown. Uh, so I really welcome the opportunity. Um, we are in an era of increasing mobility and migration. Uh, and, and we see it increasing every year. One out of seven, every, every human being in the world, one out of seven people is a migrant right now. Uh, whether that's uh, internally, cross-border, um, by desire, or, or by uh, being forced or compelled to move. One out of every seven. In Nepal, uh, half of all households have someone overseas or has returned from overseas. Very impactful around the world and in Nepal. 
Uh, what migration can enable people to, uh, to gain their dignity uh, through work, through education, um, through opportunities to uh, experience and learn new things and to bring them back or to carry where they came from uh, to a new country and uh, uh, enrich those communities and those countries in which they reside. Uh, so it's an, it's an important feature, and I, I very much think that migration will only increase particularly because of the, uh, the climate change issues that we're facing. We will see more and more environmental migration in addition to all of the other forms of migration that exist. So I think dignity, migration, I, I've been asked to talk specifically about the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, and I would like to take that opportunity briefly, and how that links to the Global Compact on Migration, because they very much are linked. Uh, and then I'll hand the mic back over to Chris or, or whoever's next. Uh, um, the SDGs were adopted in, in 2015 and uh, enacted in 2016, and so they extend through 2030, and it's called 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And there are a set of 17 goals in the SDGs as they're known. Uh, it was really a, an important milestone in terms of migration because it was the first time that migration was integrated uh, explicitly into the global development agenda. Uh, it's not just seen as a humanitarian issue or a, uh, a, an issue that needs to be managed, but very much a development issue as well. Um, the 20 and 30 agenda itself is uh, relevant to all mobile populations regardless of whether it's internal, cross-border, displaced, or not. Uh, and it, uh, it sets up these goals that are meant to be met by all of the nations of the world, for all peoples and all segments of society. And we all know that there's a commitment to leave no one behind. That's well established in the agenda, and I think we have to keep that in mind, because often Migrants, refugees, they are left behind because they are out of their community, out of their country. So migration affects and is affected by all areas of governments and is therefore relevant to each of the SDGs. And the SDGs thus provide an opportunity to protect and empower mobile populations to fulfill their development potential and benefit it as individuals, benefit communities, and benefit countries around the world. Uh, in the SDGs, the central reference to migration is uh, uh, target 10.7. Uh, it calls to facilitate orderly, safe, regular, and responsible migration and mobility of people, including through the implementation of planned and well-managed migration policies. And I could go through some of the SDGs. There's uh, related to student mobility and gender and urban, urban uh, development, uh, ending poverty, uh, sustainable cities. Um, but rather than go into details, I think I'll, I'll just leap to how that relates to the GCM itself, the Global Compact on Migration. So 10.7, orderly, safe, regular, and responsible migration and mobility. And the GCM itself is the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration. So you see how these two are linked. Uh, the SDGs came first, 10.7. In 2016, the nations of the world came together and said, we need a Global Compact on Migration and Refugees. And for the next two years, all of the countries in the world consulted with their, their populations, with stakeholders, with the migrants themselves, to develop a compact that relates specifically to refugees and one that relates specifically to migration. Both of these were adopted at the end of 2018 by the United Nations General Assembly. So both of these are now part of the worldwide commitment to set standards and a framework uh, on migration, on refugees, that everybody adheres to. Uh, this framework, of course, is rooted in the SDGs and provides a 360-degree uh, approach to help achieve safe, orderly, and regular migration. 
Antwerp towards a world where people move out of genuine choice and not because they were compelled to do so or get by necessity. Um, in Nepal, uh, the government's been a very strong advocate of the SDGs as well as the Global Compact on Migration. And in particular, they are the chair of the Colombo process on labor seven countries. That re represents 12 countries in Asia. Uh, the Colombo process for labor seven countries. 12 countries, 50% of the world's population, 30% of the world's labor migrant pool every year. Those are large numbers. Uh, Nepal is the chair of the Colombo process, as it's known. And in 2017, uh, they convened a meeting of the Colombo process countries, and they came up with a very detailed set of recommendations for the Global Compact on Migration. Almost all of these recommendations were included in the final document because uh, this part of the world has such an important voice and so much to contribute to that. And that was done under the lead of Nepal, uh, particularly the Ministry of Labor, Employment and Social Security, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. But it really included everybody. Stakeholders throughout the government, who, uh, throughout the country, were all uh, consulted. There were many meetings. And so everybody contributed to the process. It's really a signal achievement. It's the first time in history, the history of mankind since we started walking to see what was over the next hill or across the river, that we have a global uh, approach to uh, ensuring the dignity of migrants, the safety of migrants, the human rights of migrants. It's a really important achievement, and uh, it's, it's truly historic. And I'm very proud to have been involved with the country of Nepal and the government of the people of Nepal in, in having some uh, say in the development of that global compact, and you should be too. It's a real remarkable achievement. Um, the GCM itself recognizes that safe, orderly, and regular migration works for all when it takes place in a well-informed, planned, Central manner, <clears throat> and it calls upon member states uh, to work together to create the conditions that allow communities and individuals to live in safety and dignity in their own countries, and that they must save lives and keep migrants out of harm's way. Uh, so migration should never be an act of desperation. It should always be an act of choice, and I think I'll just uh, uh, end there and uh, hand the microphone. Do you want to take it from there, or should we have a speaker <coughs> in the final? I think it's better to just uh, yeah, take it from there. The uh, twins at the uh, <laughs> stage. Um, so the difference really um, between the GCM and the GCR, the, a, a, a fundamental difference, is really looking at the um, um, framework, in terms of the legal framework especially, in, ter in terms of in, in, international law. As you probably know, UNHCR, the, um, the, the a cornerstone of the legal framework is a 1951 con Convention on Refugees and the 1967 Protocol. Um, that is still the cornerstone in terms of the GCR as well. So it's really um, using that and then expanding from that just to ensure um, that, that that legal framework is still used in terms of the complex refugee situations um, throughout the world. Um, with regard to um, commonalities, there's plenty of commonalities as we were saying the whole issue now, and this is an example really, um, say in certain countries you can find a ship that contains migrants and it contains refugees. Um, the motivations for people are going to a certain country could be the same, but the reasons for them leaving their country could be different. Okay. Um, so it's 
it's um, really just trying to, um, in uh, uh, terms of the GCR, really that's the kind of main point I would like to say right now. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, there's a saying that people who do not have, have power of presentation, but they use PowerPoint presentation. So I'm using PowerPoint presentation because I don't clearly I don't have organic power to present something about. Oh my God! Do we need complete darkness here or? No. Oh, I think one. Oh, this works. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I uh, the the topic I set here is somehow some. Hey, oh, hey, sorry. Mahmo, Malay, Amro. कार्यक्रम <laughs> मैले आज सामान्यतया यो अब यसको नेपाली बनाएको छैन ग्लोबल कम्प्याक्ट एन्ड माइग्रेसन र ग्लोबल कम्प्याक्ट एन्ड रिफ्युजी को प्रादुर्भाव त्यसपछि इनरको बीचको अन्तर सम्बन्ध इनरको चुरो के हो त किन यो दुईटा कम्प्याक्टहरु दुईटा सम्मेलनहरुको आवश्यकता महसुस गरियो र यस भित्रका कमी कम जेनेरल के छन् सबल पक्ष के छ दुर्बल पक्ष के छ र हाम्रो जस्तो मुलुकको लागि यी सम्मेलनहरुलाई अपनत्व लिनुपर्ने कारण के छ स्वामित्व दिनु पर्ने कारण के छ भने सन्दर्भमा छोटो प्रस्तुति गर्छु अर्को जान जस्तोमा यो मेसेज उल्टो गर्न भएको छैन सेकेन्ड स्लाइड प्लिज हामीले अघि नै हाम्रो पूर्वका साथीहरुले भनिसक्नु भएको छ कि दुनियामा यो जुन यो आप्रवासनको कुरा छ एकदमै चर्को रूपमा उठिरहेको छ र खास गरेर सन् 2015 को सिरियाको जुन चाहिँ ठुलो मात्रामा मानिसहरु चाहिँ तपाई आफ्नो देश छोडेर विस्थापित भएर अरु मुलुकहरुमा जानु पर्ने बाध्यता हामीले सुन्यौ देख्यौ भयो भोलि भन्दा खेरि अब यत्रो यो संकटलाई कसरी समाधान गर्ने त भन्ने विषयमा एउटा मानवीय कुरा पनि हो मानव अधिकारको सवाल पनि भयो त्यसले गर्दा खेरि यो सन् 2016 मा चाहिँ सरणति सँग लाई सम्बोधन गर्ने सन्दर्भ पनि छ हैन सन् 1951 को महासन्धि 67 को तपाईको अभिसन्धि लगायत यो आप्रवासनलाई हेर्ने पनि तपाईको सन् 1990 को आप्रवासन सम्बन्धि महासन्धि पनि छ अरु थुप्रै मानव विस्थापन विरुद्धका अरु आलेख प्रलेखहरु पनि छन् त्यति हुँदा हुँदै पनि किन चाहिँ यो आप्रवासन बसाइ सरे एकदमै असुरक्षित भइरहेको छ त भन्ने सन्दर्भलाई पनि पुनर्मूल्याङ्कन गर्दै चाहिँ एउटा नयाँ सम्यन्त्रहरु बनाउनु पर्यो यो अहिले दुनियामा भन्ने हिसाबले चाहिँ यो सम्यन्त्रहरु निर्माण गर्ने क्रममा चाहिँ यो न्यूयोर्क घोषणा पत्र न्यूयोर्क डिक्लेरेसन जारी गरियो यो यो सेप्टेम्बर महिनाको 2016 सालमा र इनका मूल मूल कुराहरु चाहिँ के हुनु पर्दछ त भन्ने कुरामा यो सरसती यो 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 मुद्दालाई यो सबलाई सम्पूर्ण राष्ट्रहरुले अथवा सबै सरकारहरुले चाहिँ त सम्पूर्ण समाजको सम्पूर्ण निकायहरुले चाहिँ अपनत लिनु पर्दछ भन्ने एउटा विषय यो चाहिँ एउटा तपाईको यो चाहिँ एक आपसमा सबैले वहन गर्नुपर्ने दायित्व भन्ने दोस्रो त्यसपछि खास गरेर चाहिँ शरणार्थीहरुको सन्दर्भमा चाहिँ र आप्रवासीको सन्दर्भमा चाहिँ जुन मुलुकमा गन्तव्य मुलुकमा बस्छन् उनीहरु छन् उनीहरुलाई सघाउनु पर्दछ किनभने यो संसारको लगभग तपाईको 85% तपाईको चाहिँ शरणार्थीहरु भन्नुहुन्छ भने त्यो चाहिँ तपाईको तेस्रो मुलुकमा गरिब मुलुकमा दक्षिणी गोलार्धमा बस्दछन् त्यही त्यही सीमित छन् उनीहरु सबै सबै तेस्रो मुलुकमा जाने 
तेस्तो किसिम को तेस अर्थमा भाग्यमानी छैन त्यसले त्यो एउटा कुरा र जुन संकट काल छ संकटको अवस्थालाई चाहिँ एकदमै तपाईको चाहिँ साधन स्रोतले सुसज्जित हुनु पर्दछ भन्ने विषयमा अर्को एउटा र अनि दीर्घकालीन समाधानहरू खोज्नु पर्दछ अहिले परम्परागत रूपमा खोजेका तिनवटा दीर्घकालीन समाधानका विषयहरू हामीले हेरेका छौँ एउटा आफ्नै देशमा फर्किने अर्को जुन देशमा शरण लिइरहेका छन् त्यो देशमा पुनर्मिलन गराउने अर्को तेस्रो बोल्नु बोल्दै जाने त्यतिले मात्रै पुगेन त्यसले गर्दाखेरि अरू नयाँ बाटाहरू पनि निकाल्नु पर्दछ अब होइन अब अङ्ग्रेजीमा हामीले यो पाथवेज भनेर अल्टरनेटिभ पाथवेजहरू पनि हामी निकाल्नु पर्दछ भन्ने कुरा खोजेर छ र अर्को चाहिँ सबभन्दा ठुलो कुरो भनेको चाहिँ सहनशीलता र बहनशीलता पनि बढी कायम गराउनु पर्यो अब सेल्फ रिलायन्स गराउनु पर्यो भन्ने छ त्यो विषयमा चाहिँ यी कुराहरूलाई मोल मोलभन्दा चाहिँ जिसिएम र जिसिएहरूले अनुभव गरेको छ अर्को स्लाइडमा अब के छ त रिफ्लेक्सन सम संसारमा सरस्वती हेर्दाखेरि यो आफ्नो भाषण र शरणार्थीको सन्दर्भ चाहिँ धेरै उज्यालो पक्ष छैन कि धेरै अधारो पक्षले भरिएको छ होइन यद्यपि आफ्नो भाषण नभई पनि दुनिया निर्माण हुँदैन आफ्नो भाषणकै कारणले गर्दाखेरि संसारको यो ल्यान्डस्केप भन्छौँ नि हामीले भूगोल संसारको सामाजिक क्षेत्र संसारको राजनीति संसारको अर्थतन्त्रलाई निर्धारण गर्छ आफ्नो भाषणले तर पनि तपाईँको यसका अधारो पक्षहरू छन् मूल मूलभूत कुरा यो जुन अध्यायनमनलाई एकदमै तपाईँको सुरक्षाको दृष्टिकोणले मात्रै हेर्ने गर्ने प्रचलन भएकोले गर्दाखेरि यो एउटा समस्या हामीले देखेका छौँ त्यसले गर्दाखेरि दिनै पिछे हामीले चाहिँ अत्यन्तै खुला समाज अत्यन्तै तपाईँको चाहिँ मानवाधिकार मैत्री समाज लोकतान्त्रिक समाज भनिएका देशहरूले पनि सिमाना बन्देज गर्न सुरु गरेका छन् तपाईँहरूलाई अहिले नाम लिनु पर्दैन होइन त्यो भएका छन् होइन त्यसले गर्दाखेरि अनि कानुनी रूपमा होइन नीतिगत रूपमा पनि एउटा त्यसलाई जुन एउटा एकरूपता हुनुपर्ने थियो त्यो पनि छैन धेरै देशहरूमा कति देशहरूले सिमानामा पुग्दै नपुगिकन चाहिँ आप्रवासीहरूलाई फर्काइदिने होइन पानी जाँचमा गएको छ या तपाईँको नौका नाउमा चढेर गएको छ भने त्यहीँबाट फर्काइदिने एकदमै ठुल्ठुला मानव अधिकार मैत्री देशहरूले पनि यस किसिमको प्रचलन सुरु गरेका छन् त्यसपछि तपाईँको चाहिँ हामी अध्यागमनमा अध्यागमनमा थुनुवा राख्ने थुन्से गर्ने अध्यागमनमै राख्ने इमिग्रेसन डिटेन्सन हुन्छ यो धेरै देशहरूमा अझै पनि छँदैछ अनि एकदमै जटिल परिस्थितिमा अड्किएका स्ट्रान्ड एउटा के भन्नु भन्न सक्यो भने चाहिँ अड्किए के भन्नु पर्छ हजुर अप्ठ्यारोमा परेका अरू अलपत्र परेकाहरूलाई पनि तपाईँको चाहिँ उनीहरूको सुरक्षाको सवाल पनि यसमा गाँसेको छ भनेदेखि फेरि पनि कानुनहरू पनि छन् नियमहरू पनि होला अथवा अन्तर्राष्ट्रिय सन्धि सम्झौतामा अनुमति पनि गरेको होला म एउटा देशको नाम लिन्न तर एउटा यस्तो देश छ यति विकसित मुलुक हो जसले सन् उन्नाइस सय एकाउन्नको महासन्धिलाई अनुमोदन गरेको छ शरणार्थी सम्बन्धी तर त्यसको चाहिँ तपाईँको स्वीकार गर्ने तपाईँको प्रतिशत चाहिँ जिरो पोइन्ट जिरो जिरो वान पर्सेन्ट मात्रै छ कि जम्मा त्यसलाई मात्रै मान्य त्यतिलाई मात्रै मान्यता दिन्छ क्या एक वर्षमा शरणार्थीहरूले जुन निवेदन हाल्छन् नि शरणार्थी हुन पाउँ भनेर त्यो चाहिँ एक प्रतिशत पनि आधा कोही आधा कोही आधा मात्रै पनि छ कि जबकि त्यो अर्कै एउटा देश छ जुन देश चाहिँ राज्य पक्ष छ तर एकजना पनि शरणार्थी छैन भन्छ कि उसले उसले सुरक्षा संरक्षण पनि गर्दैन हाम्रो एसियामा त्यसले गर्दाखेरि यस्तो अवस्थाको कारणले गर्दाखेरि चाहिँ अब नयाँ मेकानिकहरू ल्याउनु पऱ्यो नयाँ संयन्त्रहरू चाहिँ ल्याउनु पऱ्यो भन्ने गर्दछ अब त्यस पछाडि हामी अब सरस्वती हेर्दाखेरि किन चाहिँ अब यो जिसिएम कुरा गरौँ होइन अघि बल पनि भनिसक्नु भएको छ यसले गर्दाखेरि सबभन्दा ठुलो कुरो चाहिँ यसको मानव अधिकारको मानव अधिकारसँग सम्बन्धित अन्तर्राष्ट्रिय सन्धि सम्झौतालाई आधार बनाएर चाहिँ तपाईँको चाहिँ यो ग्लोबल कम्प्याक्ट र माइग्रेसन आएको छ सबभन्दा खुसीको कुरा हो यो चाहिँ होइन द ब्राइट साइड यो एउटा कुरा छ अनि यो तपाईँको तपाईँको सस्टेनेबल डेभलपमेन्ट गोल्सको कुरा हामी एसडिजीको कुरा गर्दैछौँ यो एक दुई एक दुई तिन पाँच आठ नौ दस र यो अनि खास गरेर यो लक्ष्य आठ अनि आठ पाँच र आठ र अनि गोल दसको दस पोइन्ट सातसम्म गाँसेको छ यसमा अब डिटेलमा बसौँ यहाँले यो दुई यो जुन सस्टेनेबल डेभलपमेन्ट गोल्सहरूको अध्ययन गर्नुभएको छ नि यसमा यो यसलाई चाहिँ यसमा लिङ्गेज गराएको छ अब अर्को तपाईँको चाहिँ अहिले दुनियाँमा अहिले वर्षैपिछे तपाईँको यो ग्लोबल फोरम अन माइग्रेसन एन्ड डेभलपमेन्ट हुन्छ वर्ल्ड ह्युमेनिटेरियन समिट भएको थियो प्लाटफर्म अन डिजास्टर डिस्प्लेसमेन्टको सिरिज अफ इभेन्टहरू यसलाई पनि तपाईँको यसलाई यसको एउटा अङ्गको रूपमा मानेको छ होइन र सबभन्दा ठुलो कुरा चाहिँ अन्तर्राष्ट्रिय सहयोग नै हो कुनै पनि देशहरूले सिङ्गो एक्लै रूपमा शरणार्थीको या तपाईँको माइ चाहिँ तपाईँ आप्रवासीहरूको समस्या समाधान गर्न सक्दैनन् त्यसले गर्दाखेरि यो चाहिँ अन्तर्राष्ट्रिय सहयोगलाई विस्तार गर्ने हो क्या यो जिसिएमको मूल लक्ष्य भन्ने कुरा एउटा सहकारी अगाडि बढाउनु पर्दछ एक्लै के गर्न सकिन भन्ने अर्को कुरा र सम्पूर्ण समाज नै यसमा सम्लग्न हुनुपर्दछ यो राज्यको मात्रै दायित्व मात्रै होइन यो चाहिँ सिङ्गो 
समाज को दायित्व भाई कुछ इसमें रखे अभी अर्क बाल बालिका को उच्चतम तब को जो उनको अभिलाषा उनको चाहना अथवा उनको उनको आवश्यकता तेज उच्चतम एट प्राथमिकता में राख्पर्द भर्क छो अब यो जीसीएम चाहे तब को न्यू डेक्लरेशन में जो कुछ राखे थे तब को बाल बालिका थुनवा में राखने वाले थुनवा में राखने जो प्रचलन छो प्रचलन हटाने सन्दर्भ में जी तो भाई निके अगड़ी बढ़े एकदम प्रोग्रेसिव प्रगतिशील रूप में अगड़ी आगे धेरे मूलुक सुरुआत भी कर उदाहरण अगर थाइलैंड ने अभी तब को एट प्रोसिजर भी बनाक उदाहरण को लगी भादा फिर धे मूलुक तब को अभी बाल बालिका थुन इमिग्रेसन में अत्या कर थुना में नराखने किसम के सहमति जनाया तेरे तब को अब नया बाटो खोलने अगर मैं भाई पुरानो 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 पद्धति मात्र न भर नया नया मार्ग खोल पर्यटन सुरक्षा को लगी भर्क उसमें लिया अभी नया विषय परंपरागत रूप में तब को शरणार्थी के सन्दर्भ भन या तब को आप्रवासन लो जलवायु परिवर्तन को नकारात्मक असर बा विस्थापित भर सीमा नागर बाहर जाने को हक में इसको परिभाषा में चाहे आप्रवासन शरणार्थी दुटे लाखा छाइन अभी भी परिभाषा में राखा छाइन तर इस कम से कम इसमें बोलियो कम से कम इसमें अगड़ी राख्यो कि क्लाइमेट चेंज अथवा इन्वाइरोमेंटल डेग्रेडेशन को इसमें तब को राख्न पर्द फ्रेम में राख्न पर्द भाग आगे अभी लेबर राइट्स को लिए श्रम श्रमिक अधिकार के बारे में अभी तब को डिशेन वर्क को बारे में तब को अलग फराक ढंग ने इसमें व्याख्या अस पड़ी तब को अब धेरे जसो इसमें तब को अनडकुमेंटेड तब को आप्रवासी को सन्दर्भ में तब को धेरे अप्ठारो भारण कर because otherwise in the human rights language everybody is treated as you know on the same parity but human beings are also divided across several lines and being in different layers within the system it matters a lot so like to say something about that thank you that's a really great question uh it's not an easy one but i i i would tend to separate the two things i i study economics with developer uh i am uh, deeply aware of the the systemic issues let's say that impact our our all of our lives um but i separate that from these these instruments these aspirational uh opportunities that the un provides to us i'm much more hopeful and i would use the example of the uh uh the human rights convention uh that was uh, uh developed at the founding of the UN it was very difficult to craft that document and at the time it was uh, uh also non-binding if i'm not mistaken so we've got a non-binding aspirational set of documents in the global compact on migration the gcr and i think the time is critical right now because migration has 